Well, it's our 10th week of Tutorial Tuesdays, and this week's tutorial is going to seem unusually simple. But we've had people asking about it, so we thought we'd better cover it. Now, this tutorial was done on stock Android 10. There may be slight differences on other versions. Now, more than any other function on a smartphone, nothing is probably taken for granted more than the clock. It's always just there, up in the status bar or on the lock screen, ready for you whenever you need it, and it hardly takes any configuration in this capacity, as Android is pretty good about setting it according to your time zone. That said, if you've never gone into the clock app before, you might be surprised that it has quite a bit of functionality that could be quite useful to you. So let's have a look. Go into the app drawer and head for the clock app. Now here we are inside and if you look at the bottom, the clock app is actually split into four sections with the first one selected by default and it's the first useful function of this clock app, the alarm. The alarm typically comes with a couple of presets, one for weekdays and it's timed at 8.30 and another for the weekend timed at 9 a.m. But let's start a whole new one from scratch. Hit the plus button at the bottom of the list and an analog clock face pops up and lets you see the time for the alarm. If you'd prefer a digital entry, you can tap the little icon at the bottom, the keyboard icon in the lower left, and that lets you enter digitally, or you can just stick with analog. Anyway, let's set a time for this, maybe 6.30, And now we see a new preset has been made with the time that we've set. But we have some extra options for this alarm that we can look at. Now, the first one, repeat, is a key feature as it will determine whether your alarm should go off within today and never again, or whether this alarm should be an ongoing scheduled alarm within each week. If you tap it, you'll see a series of bubbles appear, each representing days of the week, and you can tap them on or off. They're all on here, so if we tap them, we're eliminating days from this alarm. Next is the selection of the alarm sound itself, with the little bell icon beside it. In here, you've got all the various alarms included with Android that you can choose from, or you can add your own here if you've got a sound file that you like. Interestingly enough, Android also gives you the option to use YouTube Music or Spotify if you've installed it to choose an alarm sound from a music track. Now, to the right of the alarm sound, there's a checkbox for whether an alarm should also cause the phone to vibrate or not. Below that, there's a field for label if you want to give a custom alarm a specific name. And the next is an interesting one, a tie-in to Google Assistant, which makes the cancellation of the alarm Finally, we have Delete, which does away with the preset altogether. Moving along from alarm and into clock, here we have what just looks like a larger version of the clock, but we can actually add other clocks to the screen from other time zones. Tap the globe button below, and then type in a city to search for. And you've got an easy reference for other times in the world. You can also remove these by long pressing each one and dragging them into the trash bin that appears 
like this. All gone. Now, moving on from clock, we've got timer. And this one's pretty self-explanatory. Enter a time that you want to count back from, like say 30 minutes and 33 seconds. And tap the play button below, and your timer is running. At this point, you can add a label to it by tapping label, and giving it a name. And you can also add one minute increments. Now, because we added a label to our timer, we can even add a second timer down here in the bottom right. And we can give a time to this one as well, say 15 minutes, and then tap play. And we can add a label to this one as well. As well. And now we can actually scroll between both of these timers and you see that they're running simultaneously. You can even see how many total timers you have by the number of pips on the right hand side of the screen. Now moving on to the final section of the clock app, the stopwatch. In case you've never used one before, the stopwatch is sort of the opposite of the timer. It counts up instead of down. This can be used for keeping track of how long something is taking. Push play, and it begins. You can then tap the lap button to start a new segment, and it will begin listing segments in order, showing segment time and total time. Meanwhile, the play button also becomes a pause button, which functions as you'd guess. But when it's paused, the lap button becomes a share button which is convenient for sending your best times in whatever you're doing to your friends. And it even adds randomly cute title to each instance of sharing. Like so. Like that. Now, if you'd just like to reset and start from scratch, there's a reset button in the bottom left. And that's pretty much it for the overview of the four main functions of Android's clock app. The only other thing to run through quickly are the general settings for each of these, which you can find in the three dot menu in the upper right corner of the app. The settings page is broken down by function. So first you'll see for clock, you can change between digital or analog clock types. You can add a seconds unit to the clock. You can have Android automatically keep your home clock even when you're traveling and you can set your time zone and time and date manually. Under alarms, you can set an auto off for the alarm, the length of your snooze function, the volume of the alarm, whether that alarm should keep getting louder the longer it goes on for, and maybe some of you need this. You can set the volume buttons to snooze or dismiss the alarm, and even control the day the week starts on. Moving down to timer, these settings are a little more basic. What the timer alarm should sound like, whether it should get louder as it keeps going, and whether the phone should vibrate with it or not. And this final bit for screensaver is really not all that exciting. It's only accessible from the three dot menu, so it's not a terribly interesting function. Here you can control whether it should show in analog or digital. And that's it an overview of the immensely useful clock app in your Android phone. As always, feel free to leave any comments, questions I didn't answer here, any suggestions or requests for new tutorials. It's all welcome. See you next Tuesday.